it's a pleasure to be here. I'd really like to uh, uh, thank the, the Rossi uh, organization for the invitation. I'm very honored to be here. So what is a, you know, I spend my, I, I spend my time uh, developing mathematical models and proving theorems. So what am I doing here? Um, well, some years ago, I worked at AT&T for a few years, and I worked very closely with the operations groups there, building tools and, and so on, mostly to monitor and configure BGP. And ever since then, I've been completely obsessed with BGP. Uh, and, and because it's such an interesting protocol, uh, especially from a sort of a theoretical point of view, but also a practical point of view. Uh, and so, um, if you're, uh, uh, actually, you know, I must admit, I'm, I, uh, my obsession with BGP has made me something of a lonely man because uh, it's not a hot topic in the networking community, in the academic networking community. It's, it's a cold topic. Uh, and so uh, very few people are actually working on this. Uh, and because most, it seems like most of the academic community wants to work in data centers and so on, where the, it seems like that's where the money is, I guess. But here I am, uh, still obsessed with BGP. Um, so, uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, something about uh, uh, a few years ago, actually about 10 years ago, I wrote an RFC with uh, Jeff Houston about uh, what we call BGP wedgies, and I'll talk about those. Uh, and, I, and I sort of learned today that maybe the IETF isn't the best forum to reach the operator, <laughs> operations community. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to talk about that in an uh, operations community. So what is a BGP wedgie. Uh, it's, a, it's a situation that we encountered quite a bit at AT&T, AT and I suspect some of you may have encountered it as well. How many operators here use communities in order to adjust local preference in BGP? Uh, OK, so we see some of that. Uh, so the basic problem here is that this is a, a, a problem that mostly arises from the use of communities. and it arises when uh, BGP policies make sense locally. You look at your configuration, looks perfect. Ah, but different configurations interact in a way that gives us multiple unique routings, right? Stable systems, uh, stable routings for BGP. Uh, contrary to popular belief, BGP is not guaranteed to find a unique stable routing. Uh, there can be multiple routings. Uh, some, some of those uh, stable routings might be consistent with your policies, others not. Uh, and when it's not consistent, well, I'll say the system is wedged. That is, it's stuck. You know, you, you have to actually manually intervene in order to get it unstuck. Uh, and the worst case, of course, is when the interaction of policies is such that no one group of operators has enough global knowledge to debug the sy uh, system. Right? We don't share, often we don't share our, our, our policies between ISPs, and so you can get into a situation where you just can't debug the, uh, debug the problem. So here's a really simple example. Uh, suppose I have a AS1 here, which is kind of like a customer, let's say. By the way, I'm going to use customer provider peer here just sort of loosely, but you know, you could also imagine these same situations happening when all of these ASs are controlled by the same organization, or right, and you're doing this kind of thing for traffic engineering purposes. Uh, but okay, so the basic idea is we have a backup link and a primary link for some prefix originated by AS1, and the backup link is implemented with a deprefme community, that is, you know, AS1 sends to AS2 some community that says, lower my preference, please. Okay, and I have a primary link, okay? So this is a pretty common use of communities. And actually, there are two stable routings here. The one on the left is the one that's intended by the policies, right? So, so the traffic goes through the primary, this is inbound traffic to AS1, goes through the primary link from AS4, but that Routing on the right is also stable. Why is that? Well, it's because AS2 doesn't see, I mean, AS3 sees a customer route, which it prefers over peer routes, right? And because AS3 sees that route, AS2 doesn't see any other route but the deprefed route. So it's stable. 
and you know what happens when this situation, if this is a customer sending a deprefme community to AS2, the customer is on the phone saying my primary link is up, you told me to put that purple community on there, uh, you know, and, but you're still sending me traffic. And the operator says, hmm, must be a bug in the Cisco code, right? But actually, it's, it's just a completely reasonable, uh, stable routing as, as far as BGP is concerned. Um, and so what do you do about that? You have to manually intervene. You have to reset that session. Uh, so here's an example. You, it just, you bring down the session, bring it back up, uh, and say, hmm, you know, put that, put that on the list of Cisco bugs. We'll figure it out someday. Okay? Uh, so, but what happens now in another example, this is uh, something that happens very often with, with uh, customers. They're doing load balancing. They have two prefixes, prefix one, prefix two. Right, and prefix uh, uh, and the link to AS5 is the primary link for P1, prefix one, and link to, uh, to AS2 is the primary link for P2. And they're using communities to both AS2 and AS5, okay? So, what happens here? Well, we have four stable routings now. Uh, and one of them is when, well, the intended uh, one is at the bottom. That's what we want. Uh, but we have two where uh, one of the prefixes is wedged. Either P2 is wedged or P1 is wedged. And we have a fourth solution where both P1 and P2 are wedged. Okay, so great. Let's try to reset the session. Well, resetting the session just bounces you back and forth between, between uh, one being wedged or the other being wedged. Well, let's reset both sessions at the same time. Oh, well, actually, when you set reset both sessions at the same time, chances are you'll fall into one of the four stable routings. You don't know which one because it depends upon the essentially the random order that messages are transmitted. So you could fall into this one where both are wedged. Okay. So how do you how do you fix this one? Uh, well, I mean, what you have to do, you can't bring the whole session down. You've got to filter out those announcements for those prefixes, right? And then bring them back up. Now, here's what I want you to think about. Who could figure this out and do it properly? I mean, imagine that, that uh, one to two link is in Moscow and the one to five link is in Tokyo. And your network operators in Tokyo don't even talk to your network operators in Moscow, right? And, and so how are you going to figure this out? Uh, this is the problem, okay? So I've talked about what I call a partial wedgie, okay? That's where you can actually solve this problem at a single AS. If you really understand what's going on, you can solve it at a single AS. The full wedgie is the wedgie where, you know, <laughs> It's, you've got to cooperate between AESs in order to solve the problem. So here's, here's an example where uh, AS1 has two backup links, one to AS5 and one to AS2, uh, and a primary link to AS4. Okay, and again, it's using deprefme communities uh, to do that. And, and uh, basically, here's, the, here's what we have. Here's the intended routing on the left. That is, uh, you want your uh, inbound traffic to come from AS4, uh, but one of the unintended routings uh, is on the right. It's not the only unintended one, but it's the one that I'm going to talk about. And let's take a close look at that. Uh, AS5 is sending traffic through its peer, AS2, and we're going to have to get AS5 to reset the link to AS1, the one that's not even carrying traffic for this route, right? So imagine you're in AS1 and you're trying to convince AS5 to reset that link or filter that prefix on that link. That's not even carrying traffic because that's the link you're going to have to reset among other uh, things. So just imagine you're in this situation. How could you debug this, uh, this problem? It's very difficult, right? You need some, a lot of communication between the network operators. So for example, 
if you just reset that session, one, uh, one to two session, you'll just bounce back, you'll, you'll bounce over to this other thing and, and, and you keep resetting that session, you'll just bounce back and forth between these, these two solutions. Um, what you need to do is you need to bring down both the one to two and the one to five sessions and then again bring them back up. Uh, again, it's going to be very difficult to do, uh, to convince AS5 to do that uh, if, it's, uh, if it's hostile to your uh, needs, let's say. Okay, and again, it's going to be very difficult to debug this problem in a very distributed environment, you know, when one of these links is in Moscow and the other is in Tokyo. Okay? So, you might say, oh, but that can't happen in my network. You know, we wouldn't do something so crazy. Look at this. Uh, uh, so there's, there are some networks. Does that look familiar? Uh, that's the kind of traffic engineering that a large, some large uh, uh, ISPs do. Some large corporate networks that are using BGP as an IGP are doing similar things. Uh, okay, so it is a problem. How do we solve this problem? So this is a kind of a dense slide. I'm, I apologize for this, but uh, if you're interested, send me email and I can send you some <laughs> citations. Uh, the basic thing is that if you think about it, when you think about shortest path routing, right? We have a lot of theory about shortest path routing, Dijkstra's algorithm, Bellman Ford algorithm, uh, when they s establish a global optima, right? And that um, theory depends on the fact that if your neighbor chooses a best route and then you apply policy to it, it's the same thing as if the neighbor pa passed you both of those routes, you apply plot policy and then you choose best routes. Those things are the same in shortest paths in other well-behaved routing protocols. It's not true in BGP. BGP is what I'll call a policy-rich protocol where your neighbor's choice may be different from your choice, right? Because of policy, because, well, your neighbor is choosing between a peer and an upstream and you're choosing between two upstreams, right? So, uh, so in a policy, so we can't use this, in other words, we can't use the same theory that shortest path routing is based on. We need a new theory, and that's what I've been working diligently on for the past 15 years. Uh, okay, so, um, and uh, what we've come up with is a new equation which says essentially that when you apply policy, the route can't get better, okay? In other words, when I apply policy, the route can only get worse, can get depreferenced, not get better. It can't get better. You can't take a bad route and turn it into a good route uh, by policy. Uh, and if you have that condition, then we're guaranteed that BGP will always converge to a unique solution. It's not going to be a globally optimal solution. It will be a locally optimal solution where you get the best thing you can get given what your neighbors have given you. So it's some kind of fixed point if you're, if you're a mathematically inclined person. So again, if you're interested in that theory, send me email and I'll, I'll send you lots of uh, citations. Okay, so here's the problem. Here's what we need to enforce in BGP, that your policy doesn't allow you to make routes better, okay? And, and if you avoid, you know, that's, that was the problem in these translations, right? What is the problem? The problem in all of those deprefme communities is that they're not being translated. You know, uh, an AS is receiving a deprefme community, but then it doesn't translate that deprefme community into a deprefme community for its upstream providers, right? And that's typically the case, I think, that, that deprefme communities are not translated often. So that was the problem. So I like customer routes better than any other route. My customer has a depreft route. Oh, but it's not, be, it's so suddenly I've turned a bad route into a good route because the depreft me community is not being translated, okay? So within an AS, it's not too difficult to, to enforce this rule 
uh, because you have complete control. The problem is between ASs, right? Because BGP erases the local preference between ASs, so we can't, you know, it's all relative. You know, you might be using 100 a, a local preference for customers, and I'm using 1,000. You know, it's all relative. So in order to ensure this rule is true between autonomous systems, you need to talk to your neighbors, right? You need to say, hey, I'm deprefing my, uh, this route below my customer uh, preference, uh, below my peer reference preference. Can I translate it into your local preference? Let's talk about that, right? You need to actually talk to your neighbors to, to avoid this problem. Uh, or talk to your uh, fellows in, in, the same, in your own company that are managing some other autonomous system. Okay? Uh, and basically, the, 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 the problem mostly arises, again, with these uh, backup uh, sort of traffic engineering uh, communities that are uh, manipulating preferences uh, and essentially, we need somehow to make sure that bad routes don't become good routes. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? Okay, uh, question. Any, any questions? Any questions? Okay, good. Go ahead, please. My name is Nishal Gobadam. I'm, I'm from Packet Clearinghouse. Um, so the model that you describe, I can see that working in the relationship of customer to um, transit provider, which is fairly easy to do because there's a flow of money, so you're incentivized to do what your customer is asking you to do. But how do you see that working in the relationship between peers when peering happens, and then the data that we, sh we have shows that peering happens mostly on the basis of a handshake. So if, I'm, if I agree to peer with you just on that basis of a handshake, or, or at large exchange points like in Indonesia that has a thousand peers and they're literally all just peering via the route server, how do you see that working there? Well, there, there could be some sort of... Uh, agreement about uh, these kind of uh, uh, backup communities, right? We could, we could share that information uh, somehow. Uh, I think it's more important with upstream providers uh, that, that those things get translated. Um, I'm not sure how to work this out operationally, to tell you the truth. Um, it's not going to be easy. Uh, I'm just sort of alerting people to the difficulty uh, that can be encountered with the use of communities this way. It's obviously something that network operators have to address. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, yes. Any, any more questions? No, yes. Any more? Any more? I'll ask this question in Russian. Uh, uh, it's important for the audience as well. I think that. Uh, let's say then that the programming committee. So I'd like to ask you on our behalf to update this presentation. So add the links that you spoke about so that the people just who are just shy and are afraid to go to you directly, right? And the, so add the links, add the additional information, so references to publications so they could find them all on our site as part of your presentation. So please update this presentation, give it to us, add the links, we need it. That's an excellent suggestion. I'll do that today. Yeah, and, and you can use smaller fonts. Uh, if there are yeah, you can use smaller fonts. Okay, now for no, okay, question for myself. Uh, as far as I understand, the main problem is that uh, the, the pref community is not transmitted from one ISP to another. So, but as far as I know, the things are changing, and now we have graceful shutdown community which uh, make preference value to, uh, sets preference value to zero, and it is transitive. Yes. And does it mean that, with, uh, uh, that using graceful shutdown community is solving the problem? No, I don't, I don't think so, because uh, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't eliminate the multiple uh, stable solutions uh, when I'm doing something like a backup community. 
uh, or deep pref me community. This, the, those multiple solutions still exist. Uh, the idea is that in case, uh, okay, yeah, they can, s I think they cannot exist in reality because uh, the problem of the, uh, the above examples is that uh, so these routes are uh, announced fr from to the up upstreams, to peers, and so on. Yes. But in the case of Grace of Shutdown community, they are still marked with this community. And these peers and these upstream providers will also set pre a local preference uh, value to zero. So there is, uh, th uh, there may exist convergence process, but it will end up with a predictable state. I don't think that's true. Okay, the, the configurations are sending communities. The other side is saying depref me with that community present. You're talking about a dynamic uh, use of a protocol uh, during uh, transitional uh, states. Uh, that doesn't eliminate those stable states from existing. They still exist. From, from my standpoint, at least it's, it should fix the problem of backup. No, it has nothing to do. Those, those communities uh, do not solve the problem. Okay. But I think what's needed is, as with uh, graceful shutdown, what's needed is some kind of community-wide agreement you know, on what these communities mean. It could be a standardization of yeah, certain uh, community uh, Grace, values. Uh, Grateful Shutdown uh, is already standard. It's a, a got a status of... Okay, well explain to the world what Graceful Shutdown does. It just uh, sets the local preference value to zero. That's all. And it is uh, uh, transmitted and, to, uh, to other players. So it's and then how long does that last? Uh, as far as far as the route is propagated, but as soon as it as it reach, uh, reaches alternative route, so it's meant to be a a dynamic. Uh, it's it's used dynamically during a transition period. It's not meant to be a stably maintained for long periods of time. It's a question. So okay, we, uh, I think uh, we should, think we should uh, proceed have with this discussion, discussion. later. Uh, so. Thank you very much for, 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 for this report. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy.